What is up everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Minecraft Tutorials with Cheeseburger Eddie. Today we are covering a topic that every one of you should become experts with because of how useful and helpful they are. Potions. We will go over a variety of different types, what you need to make them, how they work, and why they are so beneficial to your Minecraft worlds. We will also touch base on some, I'd say basics, such as a brewing stand, along the way. But before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and join the Burger Squad on our road, our journey to 10,000 subscribers. So let's get started with some basics. So the first thing is a brewing stand. How do you make it? Obviously you can search inside the actual game, uh, but blaze rods are probably the toughest thing you're gonna have to, to actually get this. You're gonna have to go to the nether, get, find the fortress, defeat some blazes, and get some of the rods and you're good to go. Now, the second thing you wanna do, make sure you have a ton of glass bottles and how you're gonna do that, just cook up some sand so it becomes glass. And then to get that glass into bottle form, just make it into a V shape like so, and it'll have three bottles waiting for you. Uh, so pretty much a very easy way of getting unlimited bottles, just be next to a beach or wherever you need to be next to water so you can get sand. Uh, and then obviously with all of the different types of bottles, you're gonna have to get all the water and you can make a cauldron which a lot of people will do, uh, but cauldrons, I mean, they're not as, as effective as I would like them. So just get yourself an endless water source like so, and you can just keep filling these bottles up. Now, the first step is go ahead and put your bottles of water inside of the brewing stand. Now you have to have blaze powder, which is again, coming from the nether fortress. You gotta get those blazes, get their blaze rods, turning in, turning in into blaze powder, and that's gonna be your fuel source for this particular creation. Uh, the brewing stand. So now once you got your water bottles, you got your blaze powder, now we can start, go ahead and start cooking. The basis of everything that I find useful is nether wort, uh, but we're going to go over all the different basic ingredients or base ingredients as they call them. Nether wort, which will make a awkward potion, uh, redstone dust, which makes a mundane potion, glowstone, which makes a thick potion, and a fermented spider eye, which is a spider eye, sugar, and a mushroom, if I'm not mistaken, um, is a creates a potion of weakness. Those are your base ingredients for making just potions. Now, how you're gonna turn those into, into better potions, into things that actually make a difference, I'd say 90% of the, the actual beneficial, you know, potions that I make, whether it's a potion of invisibility, potion of strength, um, you know, whatever, a potion of fire resistance, which are all very beneficial. And especially if you're in a realm like I am, these are potions that you need to make and have a stockpile of. So I would definitely recommend having a lot of nether wart. Make yourself a nether wart farm because that's what's going to be the base of all of your particular potions. Um, so now how you make those, let's go ahead and talk about it. So a strength potion is pretty much get your nether wart, cook it up, make a mundane potion or an awkward potion. I'm sorry. And then the second one you're going to do is going to be a blaze powder. So in the brewing stand, like right here, once you have your water bottles, you put your nether wart in. And then after this cooks up, you're going to put a blaze powder in the top, top portion. That's going to make your strength potion. Now this one that I'm making right here is a fire resistance potion, which is the same thing, nether wart, and then a magma cream. And then what we're going to talk about secondly is what you can do to these potions after you make them. So again, the uh, let's go ahead and talk about fire resistance is magma cream, uh, strength potion is blaze powder, uh, healing is glistening melon, um, night vision is golden carrots. I mean, these are all very simple to find, but the benefits that you're going to get from them after the fact. So once you make these things, what can you do to them? So the second thing is instead of it being three minutes or the basic, you know, low amount of minutes of whatever you're cooking up, add some redstone to it and that'll amplify the amounts of time you're going to get from these particular potions. Another thing you can do to these potions to make them throwable, instead of having to consume them, like drinking an entire bottle of water, which is going to take some time. So I think it takes like two or three seconds of in-game time. You can make it a splash potion so you can just throw it at your feet. And how you do that is that after you make your potion, just throw some gunpowder into the actual brewing stand and that will make it where you can just throw it on the ground and it'll explode and you can just take the effects as needed. Now, the uh, last one that I'm going to talk about is how you make a a lingering potion so you can make all of these different potions and make them however you want whether you want to consume them or if you want to just make them drinkable um, or throwing at the ground whichever works but if you go and get dragon's breath which is basically bringing some empty bottles to the end and wherever the dragon actually shoots his 
you know, fireball or whatever you, wherever he shoots his uh, breath at, you can go into that cloud. It does weaken you, so you got to be careful. But once you go into that cloud and you start collecting it with the bottle of water or bottle, empty bottles, mind you, you can go ahead and get that dragon's breath. And what you can do with the dragon's breath is you can add it to whatever potion you want and it'll make it a lingering effect. Sort of like how the dragon's breath, when it hits the ground from a fireball, it'll stay there for a solid, you know, minute, two minutes. Uh, that same type of thing can happen if you have the dragon's breath potion. So you want to make sure you have that in your Minecraft world. So just go to the end. And if you haven't got, if you already defeated the dragon, like we did in this particular world, you can just go back. If you have four end crystals, which are pretty difficult to get in my opinion, um, but you get four end crystals, you can respawn the dragon and get that dragon's breath as needed. So again, what you want to make sure that you guys have a lot of is obviously the nether wart is a big factor in a lot of these, a lot of these potions, whether it's fire resistance, strength, healing, um, Invisibility. Invisibility is one I really like, especially in a realm, because you can be sneaky uh, and you can actually, you know, surprise some people if uh, if they're not expecting you. And I think that's a very fun way to, to to play Minecraft. If you guys have ever watched any of the series like The Hunting or, you know, any of the, the Syndicate series with Optic um, or even, you know, Nade Shots series of, of uh, factions and all those other ones. So if you guys want to see more of these type of uh, these type of videos where we go actually into the realm and, and use these potions, make sure you leave that like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll go much more in depth on these actual uh, potions and how to make them work. But again, these are these are a game changer. You need to have potions, especially if you're in a Minecraft world that's multiplayer, because if you're not, I mean, obviously in a solo world, just the basic healing potions and maybe strength potions would be beneficial. Invisibility wouldn't be really a, a huge thing to use. And and, and even I'd say the, the fire, I mean, fire resistance is always going to be beneficial because you don't have to worry about the lava or, you know, getting hit with fire from the blazes. Uh, but it's much more fun when you're in a multiplayer server. So you can actually throw some things at people. You can actually sneak up on some folks. As you can see my friend right here, go ahead and throw a lingering potion on them. Boom. And that is fire resistant. So now he is fire resistant and it's gonna linger on him for quite some time. So that is a very functional yet easy way of using potions. If you guys, again, wanna see more, if you guys wanna have more information regarding all these potions, what you need to have and make them, I'll leave some information in the comments down below, but I really wanted to say thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you leave that like and subscribe to the channel. Take it easy, everybody. See you next time. Peace.